BCY America presents Crosstalk, a nationwide call-in program discussing issues that have an effect on our families, our communities, our churches, our nation, and our world. Crosstalk, an opportunity for you to voice your concerns for biblical principles. And now live by satellite and around the world on the Internet at vcyamerica.org. Here is today's Crosstalk. Good afternoon and welcome to today's special edition of Crosstalk. This is Gordon Morris sitting in for Vic Elias. And today, with a very special broadcast, is to bring you a message by Dave Benoit, presented at a recent VCY America rally in October of 2010. Dave Benoit founded Glory Ministries back in 1984 and since then has been bringing messages, first of all, on rock music, and then an outgrowth of that was moving into the area of the occult, with the many connections not only to rock music, but also as has been increasingly true in recent years throughout our society and even in our churches. The message is Disarming the Powers of Darkness, the Spirit Gate. And we'll tell you a bit later in the program how you may obtain the entire message, which is too long to present on just one crosstalk program. Right now, the first portion of that message at the VCY rally in October of 2010 by Dave Benoit. I am going to be speaking on Disarming the Powers of Darkness, the Spirit Gate. I'd like to start off by reading Revelation chapter 12, verse 12. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe in the inhabitants of the earth and, the, and of the sea. For the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knows that he hath but a short time. Now, I like sports. I like basketball. I like football. And you know what? You can generally tell when it's getting near the end of the game because the intensity picks up. Now, I know some of you may not know who Dean Smith is, but Dean Smith is, was the coach at University of North Carolina. And I had a guy tell me one time, he said, if I only had two minutes to live, I'd want Dean Smith to work the clock. He could get more out of a basketball team in the last two minutes than anybody. But you know something, folks? I believe the reason why we are seeing the intensity unfold in the supernatural is the devil realizes that this, the game is just about over. He knows it's just about over. I'm going to talk about seven different spirits tonight. There are more that I will put in my book. But I'm going to try to get into these just because of time constraints. I'm going to talk about the spirit of fear, the vile spirit, the spirit of bondage, the spirit of unfaithfulness, the psychic spirit, the lying spirit, and the spirit of the Antichrist. Let's start off with the spirit of fear. For God hath not given us the what? Spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. You know, people tell me all the time, Mr. Bill, you ought not talk about the devil, because if you talk about the devil, he's going to get you. There's not one verse in the Bible that tells us to fear the devil. As a matter of fact, the Bible says that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. If the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, then the fear of the devil must be the beginning of ignorance. The Bible says, be not ignorant of Satan's devices, lest he deceive you. Now, there's a difference between ignorance and stupidity. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Suppose you're driving down the road. You've never been down this road before, and you've never been down this town, and it's 25 mile an hour, and you're driving 35 mile an hour, and all of a sudden you look in your rearview mirror, and there's a little light going like this. And you pull off the side of the road, and the police officer looks at you, and he says, do you know how fast you were going? And you say, yeah, I was doing 35 mile an hour. He says, well, did you know that it's a 25 mile an hour zone here? And you go, I didn't know. I'm just new around here. Well, that police officer look at you and say, oh, well, I can't give you a ticket. You didn't know. <laughs> no, see, ignorance of the law does not excuse you from the law. He's going to write you a ticket. Now, that's ignorance. Now, stupidity is when you know that it's 25 mile an hour and you're driving 45 mile an hour and you wave at the police officer when you pass them. That's stupidity. <laughs> so I'm not talking about stupidity. I'm talking about ignorance. With unemployment, you hear that on the news all the time and you hear things like bankruptcy and foreclosures and that the economy is going down and you could lose your job. And Can I tell you something? That is a lot of fear. I want to let you in on a little secret. God is my supplier. 
You see this suit right here? I was in Chicago, and a church bought me this suit. You see these shoes right here? I met a man who owns a shoe store in Jamestown, Tennessee, where Sergeant York came from. He gave me these shoes. You see this watch? It's not a Rolodex. I mean Rolex. <laughs> but this guy bought me this watch. Not only that, but you see these glasses? God spoke to somebody's heart about giving me these glasses. There's absolutely nothing. Now the underwear I did buy. <laughs> but what I'm trying to say is this. You think that you have what you have because you earned it. You have what you have because God gave it to you. I was playing golf with a guy one day and he says, what do you do for a living? I said, well, I'm an evangelist. He said, an evangelist? What does an evangelist do? I said, an evangelist travels from church to church and tells people about Jesus Christ. And he looked at me and said, I don't want to sound stupid here, but how do you make a living? I said, well, I just live off what people give. Now, you stop and think about that. How would you like to live for over 30 years where you relied on people solely just giving to you as God leads them to? I mean, we're talking total commission without meetings. But you know what? I have never gone without. You know why? Because I know that my God supplies all my needs. And can I tell you something? He'll supply all your needs according to his riches in who? Christ Jesus. Not only that, but there are terrorists today. People are afraid of, of terrorists. And uh, you know what I don't understand? I don't understand why we are intolerant and as Christians, and these people are peace-loving people. I mean, I might be a little confused here. Somebody may have to explain that to me one of these days. But can I tell you something? I had a, a person one time who was demon-possessed who said they wanted to kill me. I looked at him. I said, don't threaten me with eternal life. I mean, if the devil's after you, then you know you're on the right track, right? If a demon-possessed person wants to kill you, you know you're on the right track. Now, if they want to hang out with you, that's a different story. <laughs> but listen, folks, can I tell you something? The worst they could ever do to me is send me to heaven, and that's all. You know what's interesting? Is they've got people right here who will die for what they believe, and I can't seem to get Christians to want to live for what they believe. And then you've got crime. Obviously, that's all over the world. And there tends to be fear. And then you've got the supernatural fear. fear. Remember this with Michael Jackson, the Thriller album? And in this, he turns into a werewolf. He tells his girlfriend, I'm not like other guys. Oh, that's why I really like you. No, you don't understand. And all of a sudden, he turns into a werewolf. And by the way... She was scared of him. There's been a transition today where like Twilight and these other movies where they're actually werewolves and stuff and these girls are falling in love with them. Now that's got to be a little strange. And by the way, when I was growing up, the wolf man, he looked like a street person. He had fingernails and a beard. I mean, I've seen worse guys holding up signs saying, we'll work for food. But I tell you what, when I saw the wolf man when I was growing up, I was scared of the wolf man. Now you look at how they change, and now people aren't afraid of it. They want to marry it. <laughs> now I'm not so sure that the transformation into an animal is not what happened to Nebuchadnezzar, which is called lyc lycanthropy in the occult, and that's to turn into an animal. And now you'll, you'll see that Michael Jackson had that, and it dealt with zombies. You, at the end of it, he had all these zombies dancing and stuff like that. Well, did you hear about the new English classes, English 333 at the University of Baltimore? is a study of zombies. The university isn't the first to jump in line with the log, uh, lumbering undead 
Columbia College in Chicago has offered zombies in popular media for years, making several lists of the country's most bizarre courses in the process. So you know what they're teaching? People are actually paying money to learn about zombies. But I've got news for you. The public educational system has been putting out zombies for years. <laughs> They're just walking around. They know nothing. They're graduating. They can't read and write. But... And then they go over there and, and try to get into the universities and stuff and drop out of school and, and they don't know anything. I mean, I have to... If it wasn't so stupid, I'd, I'd have to laugh. But you look at Jay Leno and these other people who take an open mic and go downtown and talk to people. They, they don't know diddly squat. I don't even know how they got downtown. <laughs> but they're not the first to jump on that. Then you've got uh, at Iowa Simpson College. I don't know if that was named after Bart or Homer. But the students spent the spring semester collectively writing a book on the history of the Great Zombie War. Now let me tell you when America started producing zombies. It happened when John Dewey and other humanists took over the educational system. John Dewey said this, There is no God and there is no soul, hence there is no need for the props of traditional religion. With dogma and creed excluded, then immutable, that means unchanging truth, is dead and buried. There's no room for fixed natural laws or, natural laws or moral absolutes. You know why our, our society is the way it is? Is there no moral absolutes? It's the evil is good and the good is evil. That's the reason why Christians are intolerant and the Muslims are peace lovers. That's the reason why they holler race when they have people coming in on our side illegally and using everything that we're and stealing. Why do you think the government in California is about ready to shut down? You know why? Because you've got millions and millions of people who don't pay taxes. Yet they go to the school, so you have to pay for taxes for them. And what and, and you know what's interesting? Instead of our government going after the illegals, they go after the government. Blew me in on that one. But again, that's what zombies do. But you know, in reality, they may be, it might be a preparatory class for the future. You say, what are you talking about, Mr. Benoit? And you listen to this. This is interesting. And to them, it was given that they should not kill them. These are demons that were released from the pit. And that they should torment five months, and their torment was the torment of scorpions when they strikes a man. And in those days shall men seek death and shall not find it and shall desire to die, Revelation 9, 5, and 6. Do you know that the fourth leading cause of death among 18 and to 65 is suicide? Now, there are many theologians that believe there's a time period during the tribulation period when people will try to kill themselves and they cannot die. We're listening to a message by Dave Benoit at a VCY rally on disarming the powers of darkness. We'll have the next portion of this message as Crosstalk continues in just a moment. Back to Genesis with Dr. John Morris, creation scientist with the Institute for Creation Research. Dr. Morris, how does photosynthesis work? Chris, this amazingly complex process takes carbon dioxide in the air and uses the solar energy and water to produce food for the plant. Unfortunately, for those plants that live in a dry and hot climate, the pores that let carbon dioxide in also let water vapor out. Plants that grow in deserts could not survive if their pores were open all day. So what are they going to do? As you might imagine, God has designed them with a special ability to open their pores and take in the carbon dioxide at night, store it in their bodies until the daytime when the sunlight can convert it to energy. This multi-step process must all be in place before any of it's worth having. Chris, even with the plants, we see an amazing Back to Genesis design. To discover more facts that support your faith, visit us on the web at www.icr.org. That's www.icr.org.
Welcome back to today's special edition of Crosstalk. Gordon Morris sitting in for Vic Eliason, bringing you portions of a message by Dave Benoit of Glory Ministries, presented at a VCY rally in October of 2010. His topic was Disarming the Powers of Darkness, the Spirit Gate. And in his message, he discussed seven spirits, among many, that are currently being used by the devil to wreak havoc on this world. And he began the program talking about the spirit of fear. Let's continue with the next portion of this message by Dave Benoit. Why did God destroy man the first time? God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with what? Violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. One of the reasons why God destroyed the earth the first time the was simply because of the fact that all the violence, in three verses of scriptures, he mentions it twice, violence. Fear is a controlling spirit. You've got worry. You've got uh, phobias. I mean, people are afraid to get on, bu- on, on, on buses. They're afraid to get on airplanes. They're afraid, afraid to get on escalators. They're afraid to come outside. They're afraid to touch people. They're afraid of ants. They're afraid of snakes. I am. You know, but there are so many phobias and so many things that people are controlled by fear. You know, the devil will always beat you up here. He'll put fear in your heart so he can destroy you. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. I've got great news for you. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 9, verse 10, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge of the holy is understanding. Let's look at the next two spirits. I've combined these spirits because they kind of work hand in hand, really. The vile spirit. And in the synagogue, there was a man which had a spirit of an unclean devil, and he cried out with a loud voice. And then the spirit of bondage, Romans eight fifteen says, For ye have not received the spirit of bondage. The other day I woke up and I was listening to the news and I I turned on the Fox and Friends and they were talking about children, how a new study has shown that children at a very young age are now starting to curse. I mean, at three and four years old, these children are cussing. Now, I don't know about you, but there were mothers in Louisiana that washed your mouth out with soap. And I'm here to tell you, lie does not sound, taste very good. You know that Irish Spring wasn't too bad, though. <laughs> but you know where these, pe- these, these children are learning it? They're not learning it from the movies and cartoons. You know where they're, they're learning it? From their parents. Every other word is the F-bomb and stuff like that. Children think that the F-word is an adjective and an adverb and a, and a participle. They think it's the whole part of a sentence. Families cannot even talk without using the F-word or using vulgarity. And I don't understand that. But you know what the Bible says? Be not deceived. Evil communication corrupts good manners. You know what that means? That means you show me a young lady standing on a street corner with a boyfriend cussing, and she's cussing, there's something deeper than that. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. You know, you can tell a lot about the, the person because of what the mouth says. When somebody hits their finger, what do they say? Now you say, ouch. That's not what they say. As a matter of fact, I've seen them go, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ. You know, like he's a swear word, like Jesus is a swear word. That's how I know that they know that Jesus is God. How do you say that, Mr. Benoit? Well, I've never seen him go, oh, Buddha. (laughs) Oh, Muhammad. Why do they call Jesus? Because when a person gets hurt, they want to blame God. And when they want to blame God, they call his name Jesus. The pornographic industry is larger than the revenues of the top technology companies combined. Combined. 
Microsoft, Google, Amazon, eBay, Yahoo, Apple, Netflix, and Earthlink. You take all their revenue and pornography is more lucrative. The cyberborn uh, sales sells in 1999's 18 billion dollar e-commerce pie. That's nearly five dollars and twenty-five cents for every man, woman, and child in America. Every second, over three thousand dollars is spent on pornography. Every second, over twenty-eight thousand internet users are viewing pornography. Every second, three hundred and seventy-two internet users are searching for adult material. Every 39 minutes in America, a new pornographic film is being created. There is a vile spirit today. Somewhere in America, a woman is sexually assaulted every two minutes. At least 45 percent of rapists were under the influence of alcohol or drugs when they raped. Why did God destroy man the first time? Genesis chapter 6 verse 5 says, And God saw the, that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination, the thoughts of his heart, were only evil continually. Don't we see that today? As a matter of fact, the Bible says, As it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be when he comes back again. You see, I do believe that we're living in the last days. I do believe that Jesus Christ is coming back. Drug addiction, talking about the spirit of bondage. Underage drinking costs the United States more than $58 billion every year. Teens that drink are 50 times more likely to use cocaine than teens who never consume alcohol. Teenagers whose parents who talk to them regularly about the dangers of drugs, drug use are 42% less likely to use drugs than those whose parents don't. More than 60% of teens, 60% of teens said that drugs were sold, used, or kept at their school. I was recently in California and I was with one of these, um, I, I've got a ministry now where I bring in internationals and I find Christian homes and Christian schools around America. And, and I was with this uh, Christian school administrator and she said that there was a, a boy that had come to their school and he told his parents, I'd like to go try the public school. So... He went, and it wasn't very long. The boy came back and said, I want to go back to the Christian school. And his mother said, why? He said, because every day I'm approached in the bathroom to do drugs. Let me tell you something, folks. There are a lot of Christians who send their children to public schools. And I want to tell you something. They're sitting there, and they're being tempted, made to feel like if you're not doing drugs and everything else, then you're not going to fit in. That's a very dangerous position. Just the medical cost of drug abuse was estimated by the National Center of Health Statistics to be nearly $60 billion. The medical bill for alcohol was near $100 billion. Well, you know something? I don't do drugs and I don't do alcohol. But you know what? My insurance goes up because there are people who do. And now that they've got the national health care coming up, what's going to happen with that? And by the way, our government is really going to do something about this drug stuff. So what, is, what are the liberals going to do about the problem? They're going to try to legalize marijuana. Now that'll solve the problem, won't it? And you know, we have such health risks. I mean... Even Mrs. Obama's on a campaign to stop this stuff. There's a health problem. So instead of dealing with drugs, they want to ban burgers. Ban salt. Make sure that everybody's got these little plaques up that say how much, how many calories are in something. You know, I observe what I eat. I told the doctor the day, I said, I, I said, I'm watching what I'm eating. He said, I shouldn't be so observant. I got on the scale the other day and it said, one at a time, please. But you know what? If I want to be that way, I'll be that way. But let me tell you something. Right after I got saved, I went home and I took my drugs and I threw them in the toilet and I flushed the toilet and I never went back to those drugs again. 
while they're trying all these rehab things and sticking needles and giving them more drugs and trying to, instead of doing all that, can I tell you how it worked for me? Jesus Christ worked for me. He made me higher than I'd ever been before. I wish everybody could hear my testimony because it's a miracle. I mean, there are people who've been saved, and I want to tell you something. They go for years and years, and they struggle with this thing. It's a demonic force. But let me tell you something, folks. The problem is not making it legalized and everything else. It's taking care of a problem. But you know what the Bible says? The Bible says, Neither repented they of their murderers, nor their sorcerers, uh, sorceries. And by the way, you know what that sorcery means? The Greek word for sorcery means pharmakia, where we get the root word pharmacy, which means drugs. So can I tell you something? In the book of Revelation, chapter 9, verse 21, it talks about drugs as being a problem during the tribulation period. And of their fornication, nor of their, thir of, of their thefts. So you're going to have thieves. You're going to have fornicators. You're going to have pornography. You're going to have all those things at the end time. And you know what the Bible says? They would not repent of those things. And I have a real hard time believing that our government could not solve that problem. Why do you say that, Mr. Benoit? Do you realize that we went after Saddam Hussein, went into Iraq, into ba ba and Babylon, which is called ba Babylon, and in less than a week, we knocked down the fourth largest army in the world and took over a government. Why is it you can't get the drug lords and the cartels in New Mexico? In Mexico, You cannot get me to believe that. So instead of going after drugs and alcohol, they go after salt and burgers. If I die with a burger in my hand, that's my problem. I've never seen anybody hit a hamburger and go shoot somebody. But again... Evil becomes good and good becomes evil. We're listening to a message by Dave Benoit presented at a VCY rally in October of 2010 on disarming the powers of darkness, the spirit gate. And he's been talking about some spirits, seven in all during this message, that are being inflicted upon our world today by the devil. Fear, the vile spirit, and the spirit of bondage. So far, we have four more to go. And we have only two more segments of Crosstalk to go. We don't have time to bring you the entire message on today's program. But as you order today's Crosstalk, you'll receive the actual rally message as it was presented in October of 2010. And it's also available in DVD video form, as you'll be able to see the pictures and messages that are part of the PowerPoint presentation that Dave was using that evening. For more information about obtaining the rally in either video or audio form, you may contact us at VCY America during regular office hours at 1-800-729-9829. That's 1-800-729-9829. This is Gordon Morris sitting in for Vic Eliasson. We'll return with another segment of this message as Crosstalk continues in just a moment. Are you on death row? One Christian film producer says everybody is. Every one of us will one day die. Then what? In a heart-stirring 30-minute DVD, film writer, producer, and director Dave Cristiano has released a penetrating on-stage drama that takes you inside a prison cell and captures the life of a man on death row who knows that in less than three hours he will die. Convicted of murder, he sits angry, guilty, and scared. At his request for a preacher, the two engage in a soul-searching conversation that is forever impacting. As an evangelistic tool, VCY America is making available Death Row, encouraging you to share with unsaved friends and loved ones. One copy is available for a donation of $8, or you can obtain a four-pack of the Death Row DVDs for a donation of $20. This offer will expire at the end of March. To make your donation by phone, call 1-800-729-9829 and specify whether you want one or four Death Row DVDs. That's 1-800-729-9829.
Welcome back to a special edition of Crosstalk today. Gordon Morris sitting for Vic Eliasson, bringing you a message by Dave Benoit on disarming the powers of darkness, the Spirit Gate, presented at a VCY rally in 2010. And we've heard about three of some seven spirits he discusses during this message. We're ready for spirit number four. So let's continue to the next portion of this message by Dave Benoit. The next spirit I'd like to talk about is the unfaithful spirit. For the spirit of whoredoms hath caused them to err, and they have gone a-whoring from under their God. Hosea 4.12 Now let me give you the steps to a pagan culture. One, declare there is no God. Well, we've seen that. What, I, what did I read a while ago to you? There is no God. That's what was said. So you say there is no God, then you remove the evidence of God from the society. Do you know what they're trying to do now? Can I tell you what the newest thing they're trying to do now? You know those little white crosses that people put up where people die on the side of the roads? You know what they're trying to do now? The ACLU and and others are trying to get those taken down because that's offensive to people. Now, maybe I might be stupid. And some people would agree with that. But why is it that it's offensive to put a white cross on the side of the road where someone died, and that's offensive, and the government needs to take care of that and get it off? And then they want to build a mosque near ground zero. And that's not offensive. And then replace Christianity with pagan teachings. Witchcraft. According to a 2002 Barner Research Group study reported by WorldNet Daily indicated that 86% of children watch witchcraft or supernatural themed television shows on a regular basis. A shocking new study finds that 73% of American teens are experimenting with the occult. Some are even more serious about the occult. One in ten have taken part in a real seance. And today, kids aren't just fascinated by the supernatural. They're increasingly in direct contact with it. And you'll see these children pretending with their Harry Potter books and with their pentagram right in the middle of the floor. And right above them, they got these words. As a matter of fact, according to the USA Today, it talks about the Harry Potter books, all the spells, the incantations, the potions, all come directly from demonic literature. Well, it's just fantasy, Mr. Benoit. I remember some time ago this lady called in on a talk show and she said, Mr. Benoit, don't you think children can distinguish the difference between fantasy and reality? I said, ma'am, in America, adults cannot distinguish the difference between fantasy and reality. And if Americans could distinguish the difference between fantasy and reality, we wouldn't have world wrestling. <laughs> Anton LaVey, the founder of the Satanic Church, says the best way to get a person into the occult is through fantasy. Now this is the spiral dance by Starhawk. The work of magic is to weave the unseen forces into form, to soar beyond sight, to explore the uncharted dream realm of the hidden reality, to leap beyond imagination into the space where, what? (laughs) Fantasy becomes real. Anton LaVey said the best way to get a person into the occult is through fantasy. The Bible says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. That's a biblical principle. And to be at once animal and God. See, that's not a new concept, folks, about turning into a werewolf and, and all these other things. That's, that's not a new concept. They did it in Egypt. The results, according to the study, is that even born-again kids are, tr- are studying pagan mysticism. And upon her forehead was the name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of of harlots, an abomination of the earth. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. Now she's drunk. This, This woman right here is drunk. Her disciples are drunk. What are they drunk with? They're drunk with the wine of the blood of the saints, of the martyrs. 
For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. And the merchants of the earth have, are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. The merchants of the earth? Is witchcraft really where you can make a lot of money? Absolutely. Absolutely. You talk about J.K. Rowling. She's the second richest woman in Europe next to the queen. Over a little boy named Harry Potter who's a wizard. Look at all these, these movies and these books that are written about the occult. They sell worldwide. And it says, I heard another voice from heaven say, come out of her. Who? My people. Can God's people get caught up into this? Absolutely. That you be not partakers of her sin and that you receive not of her plagues. Will God plague Christians and non-Christians alike if they get into this? Absolutely. Absolutely. I cannot tell you how many times I've had young people who thought they were playing games and got involved in the occult and witchcraft and everything else and thought, I'm saved. Nothing can happen to me. Or I'll befriend this witch or whatever and try to be a missionary. Let me tell you something. If you're not in the Word of God, you can't be a missionary. The Bible says, how can two walk together except they agree? Now, I come from a long line of drunks. My dad was a drunk. His dad was a drunk. Drunks have certain characteristics. And the Bible says to be drunk with the wine of Babylon. And what I did was I tried to take the characteristics of a drunk physically and a drunk spiritually. And you know what? They come out the same way. For example, the first thing I know about a drunk is they have a false courage. You can give a person who's 90 pounds, give them a couple beers, they meek and mild, they'll walk in the biggest bar and they'll walk up to the biggest guy and I'll knock you out. They're ready to fight, right? I know. We used to have a guy that lived next door to us. His name was Pee Wee Lines. Pee Wee Lines probably weighed 95 pounds with two bricks in his back pocket. And he was married to Teresa, who went every bit of 240. And Teresa would whip him once a week whether he needed it or not. And we lived in one of these duplex apartments when you could hear everything through the walls. And one time, Pee Wee came home with my dad. They'd been playing guitars and, and steel guitars and bands all night long. Came in drunk. And Pee Wee came in there. He said, Ernest, I'm going to go with that. I'm going to whip that woman. My dad said, Pee Wee, you better go lay down over there, boy. Nope, Anna, I'm going to go over there. I'm going to whip that woman. Boy, he threw the door open like he was going to go do something. We all ran to the wall so we could hear what was going on. I mean, we didn't have but very many channels back then on television. So most of the activity was listening to the walls going on over there. And sure enough, he comes over there and he, I'm going to whip you. He took a swing at her. She made him miss like that. He landed on the floor and broke his arm and she whipped him again. <laughs> but you see, Pee Wee had a false courage. He thought he could whip anybody. And you know what I find? I find Christians who are drunk with the wine of Babylon have that same false courage. They believe that they, their children, and they can bring this stuff in their house and it's not going to bother them. Their kids can watch Harry Potter. They can watch all this stuff. And they can listen to all these things. They can go to public schools. They don't have to read the Bible. And it's not going to affect them because they prayed a little prayer once. I'm here to tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. That's a false courage. Let me tell you the second thing I know about a drunk. They have tremendous mood swings. You ever notice how a drunk they go, I love you. You're my best friend in the whole world. Nobody cares about me like you. I'll knock you out. <laughs> right? They'll go from I love you to want to knock you out that fast. And you know what's funny? I'll go into a church. As a matter of fact, I had a preacher one time say to me, he said, Brother Benoit, you know what your problem is? I said, to tell you the truth, I got so many, I don't know which one you're talking about. He said, your problem is that you're just a little too controversial. And I said to him, I said, since when has talking about witchcraft been controversial in fundamental churches? 
since Harry Potter. And by the way, Harry Potter introduced something. You see, Harry Potter was the, one of the first books to be accepted in the educational system. And anything that's accepted in the educational system becomes dogma. And so you couldn't argue with it. So even good Christians would think, hey, listen, there shouldn't be anything wrong with that because it's being taught. There's absolutely, I don't see anything wrong. I've had people come up to me, I don't see anything wrong with that. But you know what is funny? In the morning, they'll come hear me share my testimony. Boy, they'll get all excited. Then they'll come and they'll sit back there and they'll smile. And then I'll start talking about Harry Potter and they go, and then I'll start talking about something else. And before it's all over, after I'm done, they're ready to fight me in the back. You know what the scripture says? The scripture says, woe unto him that calls good evil and evil good. If you don't see anything wrong. You know, I was in a church and they were celebrating, I think, their 150th anniversary. And I said to them, I said, suppose I told them, if we could go back into time 150 years... And stand right in this spot. And I'm able to tell the people of that day that 150 years from now, there will be a, a boy named Harry Potter. And he is a wizard. And he goes to the school of witchcraft. And he'll be taught in Sunday school literature. And he'll be taught and watched by Christians on television. And the books are... Christians will be reading his books. They would have looked at me like I was crazy. See, we have been programmed. That's the problem, is that we have been absorbed. I think, can I tell you what? I really believe that the Tea Party movement is a good movement. And I'll tell you the reason why I say that. I say that because finally somebody's standing up saying, if you vote the wrong way, you don't represent it. You know, I don't like Barney Frank. Barney Frank is a vile man. If I... I could put his picture under the vile spirit. Okay? But you know what? I have more respect for him than I do some of these other people. How do you say that, Mr.? Because he's going to get reelected every time because he votes the way his constituents want him to vote. I get so tired of voting for a person who says they'll represent me, and they don't. You see, that's where we're at today. And then they stagger and cannot maintain a straight course. You take a drunk, and they're drunk. I mean, they're all over the place. They, but they think they're walking a straight line. And then you start saying, well, you know the Bible says, I don't care what the Bible says. See, the Bible is our plumb line. You know that? The Bible, you see, that is an immutable truth, an unchanging truth. That's the reason why you've got to throw that stuff out. By the liberals and by those who are humans and atheists, you got to throw it out because the Bible is immutable truth. It never changes. If it was wrong 200 years ago, it's wrong today. I don't care what everybody else says. The Bible is our plumb line. Disarming the Powers of Darkness, presented by David Benoit at a VCY rally in October 2010. We have one more segment of Crosstalk to bring you a portion of that message. And then we'll tell you how you can obtain the entire message in either video or audio form as Crosstalk continues in just a moment. For the Worldview Weekend Minute, I'm Brandon House. Our website is worldviewweekend.com. In August of 2010, Glenn Beck held his Restoring Honor Rally in Washington, D.C., that included the unveiling of the Black Robe Regiment, a group of clergy from all religions, including imams, according to foxnews.com. In the summer of 2011, it was his Restoring Courage rally in Israel that also had an ecumenical flair, I believe. And in the summer of 2012, it will be his next rally, Restoring Love. Will this Restoring Love rally be about embracing ecumenicalism and the social gospel? Will restoring love mean we are to set aside theological and doctrinal issues in order to win the culture war? I believe more and more Christians who refuse to compromise on what it means to be a Christian, who refuse to compromise on the gospel, who defend theological lines, are indeed going to be called unloving. But indeed, that's the most loving thing we can do.
Welcome back to this final segment of today's special edition of Crosstalk, bringing you a message by Dave Benoit on Disarming the Powers of Darkness, the Spirit Gate, presented at a VCY America rally in October of 2010. Now, this message is well over an hour long. So to hear the entire message, you can simply order today's Crosstalk program in audio form, and it'll be sent to you as the message from the rally, not the Crosstalk program. And you can also obtain it in DVD video form, which will include the PowerPoint presentation pictures that are also part of this message. To obtain the entire rally message, just order today's Crosstalk program or request the DVD of the October 2010 rally with Dave Benoit when you call VCY America during regular office hours at 1-800-729-9829. That's 1-800-729-9829. Now the final portion of that message that we have time for today on Crosstalk by Dave Benoit. Then we've got the lying spirit. Now, therefore, behold, the Lord hath put a lying spirit in the mouth of these thy prophets, and the Lord hath spoken evil against thee. Lying. You know, the Bible talks about in the whole armor of God as wearing the, the belt of, of, of truth. You know, because see, back then, the men did not dress with pants on. They dressed with long tunics. It was like a dress, and they would take the belt, and they'd tie the belt, and it would lift the hemline up so they wouldn't step on their hemline. You know what I'm talking about, ladies. you got a long dress. You put your, and it lifts your hemline. I was recently in San Francisco. I think some of the men knew what I was talking about. <laughs> but could you imagine being in the heat of battle, and all of a sudden you step on your hemline? You wouldn't do it, but in time you'd fall. You ever hear somebody say, well, they tripped over his own lie. He tripped over. That's where that comes from. He tripped over his own lie. And you know, lying becomes habitual. Men have learned how to lie without lying. It's called the sin of perversion. It means to distort the truth. It's not really lying. It's just not really telling the truth. The Bible says, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. You know, tonight we're free. You know why? Because we have the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And the final spirit I'd like to talk about very quickly is the spirit of the Antichrist. 1 John 4, 3. And every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that is should come, and even now already is it in the world. The Bible says in Revelation chapter 13, 16, and 17, And he caused all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their hand or their forehead, and that no man might buy or sell, save he have the mark of the name of the beast or the number. Have you thought recently why whatever happens in America, it used to be if you had a a meltdown financially in America, it affected all the Americans. Now you see Greece going under, You see all these European countries going under. You see America's having... Where's all the monopoly money? It seems like everybody's having financial problems. You know why? Because they're going to have a one-world system. And I'll tell you why it's so important to have a one-world health care system. Because if there's one thing that everybody's going to need, and that's health care. And you look at all the countries around the world that have health care. We're only one of the few that don't you got to have Americans having all total health care so one of these days when he starts giving the mark nobody can buy trade or sell people saying well Mr. Benoit it's a bad economy and I might lose my job well let me tell you something if you're here when the rapture takes place you can't buy sell or anything unless you have the mark of the beast and it's coming they've got the world bank it used to be with people oh Mr. Benoit you don't know what you're talking about you know the Bible says that There'll be two prophets in the streets of Jerusalem and they'll be killed and the whole world is going to see them. People say, oh, you don't know what you're talking about. Now they can in satellite. That, that, couldn't, that couldn't happen 50 years ago. People have been saying, Jesus Christ come back for hundreds and hundreds of years, Mr. Mill. He couldn't have come back until that happened. Technology's there. And the rise of the Antichrist, 2 Thessalonians 2, 1 through 12. And it was given in 1 into 2. And it was given unto him to do what? To make war with the saints. And to overcome them. And the power was given unto him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. 
In Revelation chapter 20, verse 4, it says, And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and the judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them who were beheaded. What did the scripture say? The scripture says that the Antichrist was going to make war against the saints. That war has already started. They're killing Christians all over the world and nobody says anything. You burn a Quran and there are people all over the world that are going to get upset. But there are Christians who are being burnt at the stake. I have seen videotape of Christians being stoned to death. Behead those who say Islam is violent. For the witness of Jesus Christ and the word of God and which have not worshipped the beast, neither the image, neither had received the mark on his forehead or in their hands. Martyrdom has already started in, among Christians. The devil, the Antichrist, has already started the war. There's a one world economic system. They're talking about a one world peace treaty. They're talking about how will he bring peace over the whole world? You can't even get peace in the Middle East. He, this man's going to bring peace over the whole world. I'm telling you, folks, we're living in the last days. I believe that Jesus Christ is coming very, very soon. As soon as we are caught up, we're not going to go into a spaceship somewhere, but that's what they're going to tell the people. They're going to convince millions and millions of people. People during that time are going to try to die, and they can't die. There will be 100-pound hell stones that will fall upon people and kill them. Water will turn into blood. I cannot describe it adequately of what it's going to look like during the tribulation period. And that's all the time we have for that message by Dave Benoit of ECY Rally on disarming the powers of darkness, the spirit gate. And what we heard ended on kind of a negative note, but Dave does have good news as well in that message. You can get the entire message in either audio or video form by calling VCY America during regular office hours at 1-800-729-9829. That's 1-800-729-9829. This is Gordon Morris sitting in for Vic Elias, and on today's special edition of Crosstalk, thank you for joining us. been listening to Crosstalk via satellite and the internet from VCY America. Views expressed may or may not be those of this station. For a CD of today's program, send a donation of $6 or more to VCY Tape Ministry, 3434 West Kilbourne Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, 53208. Or download by RSS or podcast from CrosstalkAmerica.com. And join us again for Crosstalk.